Hi there, my name is Teresa Knight. I'm an artist and art teacher and I have been for a very long time. I teach with Courtney Recreation here, um, all kinds of painting courses. And I hope that we have fun and as well as learning a lot. Today, we are going to have our first foray into painting people, specifically a portrait. And we're going to do my Aunt Peggy here as an example of how to go about this portrait. So, Aunt Peggy was a lovely lady, a bit strict, but full of spark. Now she passed away about a year ago, and so I wanted to do a commemorative portrait of her to give to her daughter, my cousin. Aunt Peggy was my dad's sister, and he actually passed away this October as well. I wanted to get a copy I did two of these portraits. I wanted to do one for him as well, but unfortunately he got put into a home and with the COVID, that's the coronavirus uh, regulations at the time, I couldn't get the portrait to him because no foreign things were allowed into the room in the senior's home in case they carried COVID germs. So kind of a sad story, but um, anyway, we're going to learn the first steps. Well, the whole, the whole process of doing a portrait today, but don't expect a lot to start with. There is a lot to it. I'll go through it step by step, how I went about or will go about this one. And then I suggest you paint along with me or try it yourself with this one before going on to a different one of your own. The reason I suggest that is because uh, the lighting and skin tones and coloring and angle of the face will be different in your own photo. So um, that will require adjustment. So start at the start. We'll just start with this one where I can show you how everything will work for this one. And then um, for your own, it will require a bit of tweaking. So I can probably go over some of that in this first intro, but maybe in the second one, it would be better. Um, so this is a black and white of my Aunt Peggy taken in the 40s. You can probably tell by the hair style and it's not in color. So. Um, I do know her, or did know her, and if you're going to paint something, somebody that is, it's hugely helpful to know the person because, you know, I have my coronavirus mask on, because, um, just in case I'm going to put germs through the video, um, if you know the person, then you don't have to rely specifically or 100% on the picture that you have. You know what that person looks like. And even more importantly, what that person's personality is like in your head already. So this is, you're gonna go with the picture, but really the part of bringing it to life comes from your knowledge of the person. That's at the very end anyway, but your knowledge of the person is really important in order to do a good job. Like you can imagine all the photos that have been taken of you in your life, some of them look characteristic of you and some of them absolutely don't. I could take a picture of myself being sweet as a daisy and that may show part of me but um, another one where I'm really grouchy would show another part and we want sort of the essence of the person and not just a mood of the moment unless it's a mood that they're always in. So knowing the person is uh, the best guide to doing a successful portrait. If you were commissioned to do a portrait of someone you didn't know, then you need to ask a lot of questions about what that person is like, or possibly try to meet them. Okay, so because this is in black and white, I need a color reference. And I do have my memory. I remember Aunt Peggy, I have several mental images of her over the years. Like when I think of Aunt Peggy, actually specifically, I can see her in the early 60s wearing these checkered pants and um, her eyes are really bright and shiny 
Anyway, that's a picture that I hold of her in sort of an early 60s garb. So maybe my um, painting of her will be an unconscious combo of this 40s picture in my 60s memory. Now here also, I have a much, much more recent photo of Aunt Peggy, probably within the last five or 10 years, which does have color and it shows her skin color, if this is accurate, who knows. But um, I know her eyes were that bright for sure. Probably that's one of her favorite colors too, since she wore it for the shot. Um, so I do have a color reference here which I will need after we get the basics down. Okay, so the next thing you need to know is what materials we need to get started. Now I'm going to explain this to you um, verbally, but then also there will be a list attached or following this that you can have a look at to see what you need. So before you embark, you need to gather some things together. So first off, um, I don't know how you can get a picture of this separate from separate from this video. It will always be up here though. If you did have a way of doing it, uh, getting a picture of that would be good. Now, if you were at a future date using your own photo, please get a blow up of it um, either on your computer or um, at the photocopy shop that lets you really see what the features are like. If you're trying to work from an itty bitty picture like that, you're gonna have a really hard time or get a magnifying glass or something, trying to see every little bit of each feature, which you're gonna to need to know because just the tiniest little tweak can make a huge difference in the facial expression and the likeness. So again, I wanna to say today, we might get a likeness with my Aunt Peggy, but you should at least be able to get a believable person. Getting a likeness is an art, which um, requires, like I said, knowledge of the person and then some more. So, um, the I'm gonna tape this here so that it's right there so I can see it the whole time that I'm painting. And that's really important so that your picture and your painting are right there so that you can look back and forth and immediately see what's different, what's needing to be changed. Um, Okay, materials. You'll need, in the future, you need your own picture, blown up, hopefully, and a table easel. Um, I do not recommend ever doing a portrait line flat because you just get unbelievable distortion. You see, if I was doing this sort of on that angle to the camera, and then I brought it up, it would suddenly become a lot taller than you had intended because of the foreshortening that you get with, I don't know if that's the right word for shortening, but the distortion that you get when the thing's lying down. So have it so that you're sort of facing it the way you would face the person. So that uh, both the photo and the painting, so that you don't get that distortion. It's not so important in landscape or such other kinds of painting, but with a face it is. You don't want, um, somebody doesn't want their face looking really squat and tomato-like. So, okay, so a table easel is really good. If you don't have a table easel, can't get one, prop your support, your painting support against something that can put it on an angle for you that doesn't push back when you push on it. Um, some table easels are pretty flimsy and they do. Every time you push on it, they move back. You don't want that. Tape it down if you have to, but you, you want it to stay still while you're working or you're or it's just annoying. Okay, so you need a table easel, you need your photo, you need something to paint on. So there are canvases that you can use, or you could use a piece of paper for this trial, but I wouldn't because if you by accident, or by luck, or by skill, did a masterpiece this time around, if it's on paper, your paper's gonna buckle and You'll have to, it won't last, it'll fade. And um, just the buckling of the paper uh, warps the whole thing. Actually don't use paper unless it's specifically for acrylic painting because paper will buckle and that's just annoying. Okay, so you need a, a genuine uh, canvas, which is 
you can get almost at any art supply store and um, and or a wooden painting support which is called a cradled panel for portraits I actually prefer the wooden one and that's because this is just me I tend to press a lot uh, on the surface which the wood will take in canvas you can actually kind of make a dent in it which you don't want the other thing about canvas is um, it has a tooth and when you are down to the finest of details which once you get good at it you might not have to go that detailed but to start with you kind of do um, that tooth creates blobs in the paint which are get in the way of things whereas this is a smooth surface it doesn't bite you when you get down to the details so canvas is fine but it, you could end up with that problem down the road uh, cradle panels fine in either case you're going to need to have it primed with gesso is what artists use for primer uh, any primer might work but we don't know for sure what kinds of primers other than those that are made specifically for artists are permanent and you don't want primer fading underneath your painting and somehow discoloring it so our artist gesso is good and you just paint a coating on your board and or your canvas um, so that it's not absorbing water or your paint and paint sitting on top um, some some canvases are bought pre-gessoed but I still recommending I'm still recommending that you gesso another coat on top because not all canvases are created equal and some of them the primer is spotty so you have these shiny patches in the middle so you're painting along and suddenly you hit a sort of skid where it's shining doesn't take the paint that's also annoying so gesso it ahead of time even if it's pre gesso just to make sure that you don't run into that problem okay so we have our gesso support we have our photo the next thing you're going to need is paint so um i have all the colors that we're going to need on the supply list so you also need a palette and palette paper is fine or anything that's one color only preferably white and um waterproof and uh, I think that's all it needs to be. This one's disposable, so if I make a big mess, which I always do, you can just fold it up and uh, throw it away. Uh, Corel Dinner Plate has this perfect glossy finish, which you can easily take the acrylic paint off of. If you need to, you can um, actually peel the paint off when it's dry, because if it's thick enough, acrylic paint is color in plastic and it dries to plastic so it actually peels off this support really nicely for easy cleanup so you need a palette so disposable palette corral dinner plate margarine lid something like that white one color waterproof then you need brushes i recommend at least four brushes from say an inch and a half thick for big backgrounds down to a little guy like this uh, might be a quarter of an inch wide and then at least two in between I have a whole raft here but the more the better they all have their uses um, I work with flats not rounds and that's because with a flat brush you can do a thick a thick stripe that way or a thin stripe going this way if you just turn it to the sides kind of like calligraphy turning it this way whereas a round you can do the same thing but it's based on pressure so with a round you have a thin tip which you can skate along the surface with and make a fine line and in order to make a thick one you just press more so that this part of the brush is hitting the paper making a fatter line both are good it's just that um, they're both skills that that you get with practice and switching back and forth well i'm just i'm just better with this because it's what i've been using 
The other reason for not using rounds is most rounds are made for watercolor and watercolor is a very watery medium. And um, because of that, it might not be strong enough to push your acrylic paint around. Acrylic paint is closer to, not margin, that's more like a oil paint, not butter, but closer to a thick cream than watercolor, which is more like water. So you do need a somewhat heftier brush. Okay, also you could have um, acrylic medium, that's for separating your coats. So sometimes if you have a you have gone so far and it's just perfect and you don't want to wreck it, this is, happens to me all the time, and you go that little bit further and you're going to wreck it. So you can isolate that coat so that if you have to rub off a further mistake, you don't rub off that first layer. So you do one layer and you can spray it with, um, here's one for a matte, um, a matte one, a uh, painting spray, or there's Camar Varnish by Krylon is good too. Um, so that you do a, a bit, let the paint dry, spray it or paint on the acrylic medium, and then um, as soon as that's dry, which doesn't take long at all with acrylics, you can do your next, go on to your next step without worrying about wrecking your first step. Really good for peace of mind. You need a rag, some paper towels. The paints you need should be acrylic paints. Um, it doesn't too much matter at this point what quality you have, but do not get those liquid ones. Um, I'll show you in a minute, but don't get those crafters ones that are coming in uh, for crafts because uh, we don't know if they're permanent. They don't say they are. And um, they already have white mixed in oftentimes, so it's harder to get the color that you want when you're mixing. I'm not going to teach color mixing in this course. Suffice it to say that the, I do teach that in a separate course, but um, you can get any color you want with the colors that we are starting with. So uh, I start with two reds, two blues, two yellows, a black and a white. And from those eight colors, with practice, you can mix any color that you could possibly need. Is there anything else we need? Maybe if you, when you're using acrylic paint, just put a little bit out at a time. If you tend to put out huge globs, you may want a water spritzer to spray it from time to time to keep it from drying out. Acrylic paint, uh, the characteristics of it that are most important are that it dries quickly that characteristic, which the pros and cons are, you can paint over top of it super soon. Uh, the cons are, it dries up so fast. So if you put out too much on your palette or mix up a color that's just the right color, it's dry before you know it and then you have to throw it out. So only put out what you need and only mix what you need for a little while unless you spritz with water, which doesn't always work anyway or use a stay dry, stay wet, sorry, palette, which I never use, but could, because it does keep your acrylic paints workable, even till the next session, if you want, um, to cut, it keeps them covered and airtight. The only reason I don't use it is because it doesn't afford me enough room. I'm kind of a messy painter. I think that's all we need, a water, water jar, Okay, we're good to go. I'm gonna get my painting supplies out and then we'll begin. Okay, that was a fair bit of preamble, sorry about that, but necessary. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is a loose, loose drawing. I forgot to mention you're gonna need chalk you don't have to use chalk, but something that's not going to show up under your paint. Okay, so you want loosely the shape of the head. And when I say the shape of the head, fortunately you can see her head shape really well. Not including the hair, but including the skull. So coming down right tight to that side and back there to where the actual skull would probably be. See that? Like that. Now I'm going to put this on here. Okay. 
You will not get it right the first time, so as close as you can get, okay? But if you don't get it, get it. Uh, and the neck. Try and get the shoulders in. Okay. That's gonna need to be adjusted too, for sure, but. So kind of the head and skull. So you can draw a circle on this. You can draw right on it uh, when you have your own photo. So you see I've drawn on here. I'm replicating that here. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just paint uh, a background color. I don't know if I'll go with this pink. It just happened to be pink, this canvas. Um, and then a skin color for everything here, and then a different color for the shirt. And I might put in just this much of hair, but I don't want to go to it. I'm going to put in less hair than there is because until I'm sure where it's going to be, I don't want to have to paint over it with skin. I don't want to have to paint over it with background. So it's just to start. Okay. So general flesh color. I don't care if you can see me now, by the way. It's more important that we focus on the painting. Um, have clean water. Like, just keep changing it. And something to dab your brush on. Now, when I get it wet, take the excess off so it's not too wet. You have to wet it first, though. Now, to make a skin color, start with white. This is takes some practice. So, start with white. We're just going to get the medium skin color. So... You can see uh -oh, on Aunt Peggy here that there are darks, mediums, and lights of the skin color. See this light, medium, dark? We're just going to paint it not a dark skin color, not the lightest skin color, but a medium. So start with white. You're going to have to add red, yellow, and blue until you get what looks like a skin color. Doesn't matter which red or which yellow yet. See, it's way too purpley. You just keep going. So if it's too purple, I'm going to add yellow until you get what looks like a fair skin color. She's not dark or tanned or anything, but like that. I'm a relative, so maybe something that's close to mine. Okay, so I'm going to paint the whole skin area. Up past the hair. Portraits, by the way, is super rewarding. It takes a ton of practice and there's a lot to it. But when you get a painting, a portrait to come to life, it is so exciting. It's really worth it. It's like magic on your canvas. Suddenly that person is right there. Okay, so I'm doing the head and the ear because I don't want to have to paint it in later and have it not match, right? If it's a completely different color, that will be a disaster. Well, not a disaster, but you'll have to fix it and then that's more work. When I try to paint, I'd like to go with the easiest way. Like there's always a number of ways to approach any painting and they'll depend in part upon your personality. But um, to start with, the easiest way is not a bad way to go, especially for learning. So blocking these colors is easy. That ear's not in the wrong place, but if I go over it with hair, no problem. Okay, next, get it in there. The color's a bit off, but it doesn't make any difference as long as I've got a medium color here. I hope that you can understand me okay because I'm not facing the mic. Okay, that's good. Now, we're going to indicate where, that pink doesn't show through too much, we're going to indicate, oh, by the way, acrylic dries slightly darker than when you put it on, just like acrylic house paint. Okay, I have these glasses because I'm going to need them when I do close-up work. Now, we'll put a different color for the shirt. I'm going to go with blue because Aunt Peggy's shirt is blue in the other one. 
any blue to start with, so just kind of a medium blue. See, I'm using my finger here. When you're painting acrylic, because it dries so quickly, if you're wanting to blend or remove paint, you have to fairly quick because it dries so fast. So finger is always at the ready. That's why I use it rather than putting my paintbrush down, picking another one up. Okay, blue. Now I'm gonna put where the hair is. Now we're gonna make a brown. If you have brown, just use brown. But if you get used to making browns, then you'll be able to make three or four or infinite number of browns so that you can get all the different browns in the hair. If you just start with a brown tube, which is fine, you're still gonna have to make it into different browns to accommodate all the different colors that are in the hair. So, may as well learn how. Okay, so I'm gonna make up a brown, which is red, same as the skin, red, yellow, blue, together with white. So, and you have to keep going till it looks brown. Now it's too yellow. Blech. Looks like green. That means I have to add red, which is the opposite color. Now it's too red. I'm going to add blue. Now it's like gray. It's a nice gray. However, we don't want gray. I better turn into brown and not make a liar out of me. Honestly wants to be gray today. Oh. It takes me a long time to mix colors too. There, I'm getting towards the brown. I didn't have enough yellow in it. Okay. Finally. So, I need a bit more water. So I'm just going to brown in. This is way lighter than her hair, but it's going to white in, put in where sort of the hair is. I'll probably have to paint over half of this again because uh, I adjust as I go. Now, by the way, with the portrait, oftentimes it looks like really bad for a long time to get it right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show my previous finished result. So I can show it to you without glare. So, this is a previous one that I did of her. That's the second one I did because um, I gave the first one to my cousin. This one was for my dad. I hope that showed up okay without glare. If not, I will show it again. Just because I want to encourage you that even though it might look like heck at this time, over eventually it's going to look like her. Now, the next thing, with our chalk, or just on here, you can put a line, you can put a line, I'm gonna move this for a sec, down the middle of the face, right bisecting the, the face. This line has to be a bit curved, because if it were to continue, it would go right around the back of the head, like that. The head is a sphere, it's not flat. Well, it might go around like that. Anyway, so curving through the middle of the head and then across, also curving, because if it were to continue, it would go around the back of the head like so, right around. And then uh, I teach this almost as a full class, how to do this, but for now, just draw them on here. This is why this is an intro. Okay, so we're trying to draw where the eyes are, where the mid, sec, mid of the face is, and where that mouth is, to get an idea. And we can put that on here in either paint or chalk. I'm gonna go for paint, since I have really light paint on my brush. If it was heavy paint, it wouldn't be good, but light paint is good. Actually, that brush is too big. 
So I'll switch this one. But the color's good for it because this color or the brown chalk would blend in to the painting. And I have to stand in front because if I paint from the side, it's going to get warped. So pardon me for a minute. I'm standing in front. So it's not in the middle. It's off to the side a bit. Oh, there. And then the mouth is fairly low, actually. It comes to there. That ear is probably going to have to move up. I hope you can see these lines. They're pretty light. Out there. Okay, so that's where, um, and then, then you can sort of do one for the bottom of the nose too, approximating where you think it is. See? And maybe the bottom of the chin. I do teach all this in steps. This is just to get your feet wet. Okay, fun. Now, let's put in some of the darks. So we have all the colors sort of blocked in. I haven't decided about the background color yet, so I'm not gonna deal with it. I'll decide it later. Okay, so while we have this dark color, the color of the hair, like the mid-tone in the hair, um, it's not bad for the darks in the skin. I'm gonna put her back up here so that you can see as well as me. Oh. I have an apron on. You should also have something on because paint can get all over the place. And I've covered my table so that I don't get paint on it. Now, as I go, I'm always adjusting because if this is right here, you can look back and forth and very quickly see what's different. Well, it's too fat here. And then I might even have the chin too long. Okay, so I'm gonna put in where I think the mouth might be. And just the most basic of eyes here. So where they might be. And kind of the shadow, so down the side of the nose. Move that in, because it is in. By the way, remember I said I had done this portrait before. Um, that's a case of, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. If you do it a second time, and sometimes a third, one of them will just, usually it cuts closer to perfect every time. And then the next time you do it, it's further away again. So uh, doing it once or twice or even three times is not a bad idea. So you get more familiar with the person as you go, almost like you're getting to know them. So you're studying your face really close up. Just tightening here. Now, see there's this cheek shadow here. I'm going to put that in. And just kind of doing the shadows. I'm, to say, I'm a bit hungry. Take a break when you need something to eat, which I'm going to have to do in a minute. So I'm adjusting bit by bit. I'm going to put that shadow in. I'm just putting the darks in, which are fairly evident. That shoulder is going to have to come up. You see, I'm seeing things as I go. That shoulder, the line is straighter. That's okay. Okay, you can see that the hair is going to go out more. I think I'll do that while I'm here. Bring that hair out more because it might make a difference. This um, support has a lip, but it's better without one, actually. It's just what happened to be what I had in the house. But it's better if it doesn't. Adding a bit more hair here because there is more hair there. There, that's better. Okay, and then that's not necessarily going to come in. Okay, so I'm just getting the general idea. I think that neck's going to come in. Now, how this works... That chin's got to move over a bit. Is if I've got the ear 
how I'm going to measure where the ear goes is if I put straight up from the nose, if I brush straight up from the nose, the ear comes lower than the nose. Can you see that? So the ear has to come down further. It's easy to take paint out when it's still wet with acrylic. Even when it's still partly wet, you can take paint out. Once it's dry, maybe not, but while it's still wet, you can easily take paint out. So I'm moving that ear down because it is down from nose, just by taking paint out. And that's white, not dark, so I can take that paint out. I'm just wiping it on my apron, which is why apron's a good idea. You don't have to fuss with picking up stuff and bring it, putting it down all the time, which can be a super note oh, that lines in too close, so I'm gonna get rid of it while I can. See, so here's where I said I scrub. Sometimes, if you wanna take paint off before it's dry, if you really scrub, it'll come off for you. And that's why you want an easel that's not gonna move around on you. Okay, you can see that's going back a bit. So you're constantly adjusting. I never get it right the first time. Well, once in a blue moon. Now see here, there's a gap between this. Um, I don't know yet whether this, which side of this line is right. It's a big line, so I'm not gonna move that up yet, even though there's a space here. Okay, so we're measuring off the nose, the ear comes down further, and that is right. You can see that. And then let's measure. So you can measure everything off everything else that you have. So let's do the nose length compared to the nose to the chin. Nose to chin on mine is longer. Nose, nose to chin is also just a bit longer. So we're good there. So we can keep going. Now, uh, just do, when you go to measuring, just sort of, you can see how I do it. Once you have something that you know is in the right place, then you can measure off of that. And I'm putting the mouth in, and we'll just see if it's in the right place. Don't know. Hope so. I might have to redo it. Okay. Not bad. All right. Now, I'm just going to sort of ghost in where the eyes would, might be. to see if it sort of looks like her, or like she's looking at. You can see I've got her mouth too big. That doesn't matter yet. Move that up a bit. Now go back. Oftentimes when you get your up like this, you're making huge mistakes, you don't know it, or you're just carrying on thinking all as well, when actually, if you got back a bit, you'd see right away, oh, I have to change this. So I'm gonna go back, have a look, I can see that her chin is too long and her face is not wide enough. It needs to be wider here a little bit. I'm going to take a bit of paint off here. And here. While it's still wet, remember it's easy to do this. back a bit. Oh, sorry. Okay, there's also a shadow up here that I'm missing right there. So back with my brown, which is almost dried out, so I might have to make another one. I still might have enough here. I have to, to see these shadows, if you squint like crazy, you will see it better than if you just look at it. So I'm squinting, I'm using really watery paint at this stage. There, and a shadow across there, and a bit of one down here, and here, and there, and there, there, there. So I'm trying to paint the darks where I see them. Okay, that's not in a bad place, so far so good. Here, 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 see? 
Mm. Okay, so far so good. Now, um, let's put some lights on. Now these can't just be all monotone. So far it is monotone, but when we're not just gonna add white, we have to add a light skin color. So I need more white to start with. Now feel free to pause this video whenever you need to, to try and do what I did. So here, I started with white, I grabbed some white, and I'm taking yellow to mix in. Um, I'm painting very lightly to start with. That's because with acrylic, it is easy to paint in layers, but if you paint dark over light, it's super easy. But if you're painting light over dark, you it requires a fair bit of paint. You have to cover what you're painting with the paint and acrylic's not that thick. So it's better to paint dark over light. If you have to paint light over dark, it, it, it's easy, but it requires extra work. Like you can do it. So best to start out lightly and go darker as you need to. Okay, I'm supposed to be making a really light color here. However, I've gotten carried away and made a dark one, but no problem, I can just add that to my white because that's a good skin color. I'll just start with white here. See if we can get a nice light one. Lighter than this background. I want it to show up in more white. Now, so far, I haven't gotten to any stages where I want to keep everything by putting a sealer coat in. I'm just, is that light enough? Can't really tell because of the glare. I'm going to make it lighter, just and a little more yellow. Perk it up a bit. If you're lost already, then go back to the stage where you're putting, putting, putting chalk on here, or just replicating my lines. I hope you can see them okay. So you have your circle, a line that's a curved, line that's curved, a curved, because it would actually go right around the whole face. Okay, and then try putting things in the middle. Okay, so that is a lighter color put some of these lights in where I see them. Ugh, a bit yellowy, but that can be fixed later. Let's see, it's a good thing I have pink behind, because then uh, this color will blend in. Maybe not the worst idea. Okay, so see how it's light down here and then across the stripe from the nose, right here. So we're kind of dividing it into dark, medium, light at this stage. lights. I don't know if I got enough space now between the nose and the mouth. So see how when I'm painting over top of that dark it still shows through? That's why you don't want to have have it in too dark. So we're putting the lights in where we see them, but not the super lights, just the light. Whoever took that photo way back in the 40s did a really good job. It's got beautiful lighting. So it's a good picture to paint from. If you paint from a photo that's really substandard, you're not going to end up with a good portrait. Take a good portrait or use a good, take a good photo or use a good photo of somebody else's to do it from. If you use somebody else's photo, you have to have their permission. You can't just use a photo you find in a magazine or something and um, say it's yours or that the painting that you do from it is yours because of course it isn't. There's a ton, like a professional photographer did this por portrait and he, she was trained 
and how to do it. It's obviously really good at it. It's not easy to do that. So don't take away from somebody else's expertise by saying it's your own. Each, each of these things does take expertise or luck. So if, if you have a beautiful photo by luck, great. If you have to use somebody else's, then give credit. Give, get permission and give credit. That's only fair. Yeah, a lot of the work is in getting a good, good photo. So you see, I'm putting in the lighter tones, not the lightest lights, but the lighter tones. And again, front, I think I've got her forehead too high, but I can bring the hair down over that easily enough. Lighter here, here, little light here. Oh, down the neck. Right here. Here. I'm gonna have to bring that chin up a bit. I might not have her face wide enough here. It's fun getting this right. It's a beautiful bone there. for some lighter lights, almost just white. I hope you're able to see these okay. You can squint like crazy and see it. See where the dark medium lights are. Light is right in the middle of the forehead there. Wait, wait. So far, it doesn't look like her or not look like her, and it won't at this stage. If it did, I'd probably lose it later anyway. So to get acrylic to blend, get in there with your finger before it dries. So we're going lighter and lighter on the lights. light I'm gonna move up a bit that extra light there move it up a bit so this I'm kind of doing the face structure before I put the features in because you have to get the face there before you can paint the features on it you don't want to paint the eyes first and then have to put the face underneath that's won't work because if you have the eyes slightly in the wrong place then the face will be all distorted better to have the face right underneath and then put the eyes where they naturally go when the face is in place okay now this widest part if i go straight up from the mouth it's not very wide it's dark then light and dark and then the that comes this I'm gonna make this a little bit that's better just a bit softer now this white comes down to here across there across the top of the lip here I'm going to bring this up a bit because that's the one thing I can see that's not right. See, so I'm going to come in in dark. If I have any dark left, if I don't, I'll just make it up again. And bring that up. There, that's better. No, not quite that far. It does get a bit finicky. So far, we're getting a sort of a dark, a medium light and light. Uh, let's see, go over further. That's 
it's light up there. Coming back to have a look. This needs to be a bit straighter. If I get back, I can see that. So in your case, don't worry too much if it looks like Aunt Peggy, but that you're getting the sense of a 3D face and that the face is coming in and out in different planes, which of course it is. Okay, that forehead's gonna have to come down a little bit. Your neck might be thinner. I can bring the hair back over it. Make that a bit lighter up here. get that light that's on the this light on the bottom there this photo really it's so hard to tell if the mouth is open or closed i had to write to the her daughter and ask her and the daughter didn't even know so okay i have to take a quick break because i'm starving i'll be back Sorry about that.